Welcome back to the Dog Bone Podcast number six in our series. And uh, this week we are actually going to shift it up a little bit. Um, I know we liked, I think we <laughs> liked the idea of using Facebook questions, Instagram questions um, as kind of our outline. But this week we're mixing it up because this week we are coming off of a really, a, well, when was the last workshop? Two weeks ago. So it was, they were really close to each other. It mm-hmm. feels like it was a long time ago. We had one weekend break between. So we did a Next Steps workshop in Buffalo County, which was just that, the next steps. It wasn't advanced. It was simply um, building off of the first workshops, which we typically call a foundation workshop. That's a, where a huge emphasis is put. Um, so we did the next steps over in Buffalo County. We got, we had a chance to shed hunt. Um, that was a, a awesome time. Great time. Um, we went through a blizzard, so that didn't help it. But, uh, two weeks later, we're back here. We did this one this last weekend here at our place. Um, the largest we've ever done. We had, um, 16 dogs that were, that were dog to handler And then we had families with those dogs. So I think we had like 40 people, Mm -hmm. 16 dogs. We ended up at one point working 19 dogs at one time because we had a couple extra people that um, grabbed dogs that we had or some of our helpers had. And so at one point, I think we did have 19 going red. Some of the kids came in and out of the workshop. So that would have added more to it. So size of that one was, was, was for us overwhelming, um, in a good way. In a really good way, yeah. <laughs> yeah overwhelming, I, not in o- a bad way. Over, a... Overwhelming Exciting with the, way, with the idea of how well it went, I yeah. thought. So it was, um, it really ended up a, a kind of capped off two really great weekends. We've got one weekend off and then another final workshop of the season for us as far as the spring goes. Um, and we had, I think it was our best workshop. This big one, By this, far. this last yeah. foundation one, a uh, combination of um, the people and the dogs and the stuff that was covered. And, you know, by having a little bit bigger group, we had more, we had more stuff to talk about, more people with their dogs, more situations to kind of assess and figure out where people were, where their dogs were, what we needed to do um, to help them first build the foundation necessary to do whatever they wanted. I think it was um, an interesting group because it was quite wide as far as interest levels, um, big picture with their dogs. We had a bunch of people that weren't going to hunt. I mean, Mm -hmm. we had several um, families and couples and individuals that weren't necessarily here for for hunting stuff in the end. They just wanted a better dog to be able to do more stuff with. And we had puppies ranging from, I think, Georgia was 13, 13 weeks. 13 was weeks. Um, we had four or five that were under, definitely under six months. A couple of them were under mm-hmm. four or five months. Uh, I would say four of them were under five months. Um, a couple dogs that were a little bit older. We had some that were six years old. Yeah. Was... So it was just a huge spectrum, wide spectrum of dogs taking part. And uh, that led for some really good. Um, learning opportunities so our direction with this week's podcast is talk about some of these workshops because they're fresh and i'm excited about them like it's given i've i've found motivation and inspiration in my own training i'm going to talk a little bit i think about why i think that happens but um it that's going to be our focus this week and i've got and the other part is is keep sending questions because i've got three or four real good ones on tap here that we're going to be tackling um so keep sending those in instagram i got one for sure off of facebook i got two for sure off of um that were like literally people saying i think this would be a good podcast topic um so i think that we're going to keep doing that listen if you're listening i think those are really great ways to pass on questions to us for us to be able to and i think even talking about the workshop too we'll end up covering some questions on facebook because the more that we post about the workshops pictures when they're coming up 
we do get a ton of questions about those <laughs> from people wondering, you know, is their dog too old to come? Is their dog too young to come? Can I bring family? So there are a few logistical questions we could probably ask on here too regarding the workshops that people might want answered. But overall, I think we always do a recap kind of at the end of the workshop weekends and it ends up being emotional in a way because there's so much more involved than than just the dogs and I think that's something that we want wanted to talk about tonight because we end up like Jeremy said taking away so much from this and the trainers team as well but then the response that we get from people that come to it ends up being so much more than just about the dogs which I totally. think is important to talk way about way more way more and and I think um you touched on the trainers team so when we have I think I think my thought is for this is give a, a just a little bit of a background of what what a handler's workshop looks like for us because there's a there's there are training workshops out there there are schools I had a message that came from this weekend's workshop from a guy um, that has followed us for quite a while now and um, I think he's probably a pretty good trainer and he's got multiple dogs and um, his question was regarding schools and seminars and workshops and his he wanted my opinion on um, it sounded like he had some interest in going to some to get more education I think I, I guess that was one of the questions I asked back to him was he wanted to know what my thoughts were on schools and um, getting degrees or, or certifications in he for these to training things. become a things. certified something. dog handler I don't know, in a sense, something. like if that's something you can do. And my answer was, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I've never been to one. Um, I know there's a bunch out there. I know one guy that did go to a school. I think it was really expensive. Um, it was real special, specialized. It was, um, it was dogs that were like, Attack, not attack dogs but like uh, like kind of canine like i don't even know the terminology the, the you know those malinois and those right. dogs that are bite they wear the bite suits and all that stuff for so it was a real like a, um, the dogs that chased it, down the bad guys yeah it was really <laughs> specialized training i don't think it was true like military type training but it was it was pretty intense so um something that someone probably definitely should go to get more education on when if they're in, if that's where their interests are we're not offering that like that our, our our what we're trying to do with a workshop and so my answer to him was i just don't know enough about them um i think that certifications uh degrees or whatever you call them are that it's paper and so yeah, I mean, it says you got through a class that went through our workshop we could give them we a could certificate give them a at the end that says i don't you know what the, it, the i don't know workshop. what that means right yeah. so so I so I, I I hold back on going. Yeah, I think you should go to this school or that school. I just don't know if, know enough about them. But I do think that you should research it and find out. And and if there are some that you're interested in, Google. I mean, that's the way to find out. Google it. But then when you find a few that maybe are some um, interest in what you're looking in for in particular, reach out, find out more talk to people that maybe have taken it. I think you put your homework in to find out what it really is um, and then find out if it's a fit for you. And if it is, maybe you go for it. I, you know, we had a couple people, I had one person that really wanted to come to the workshop, I think, um, sent, it was a money thing. Like they weren't, it was, they couldn't afford to do it and they, they didn't know if they could afford to do it. And so they sent half the money um, a couple of weeks later, they, you know, I'm really sorry. I just don't think I can come up with the other part of it. So they ended up, they didn't do it. They couldn't do it. It, it was, a, it was a financial decision that they decided to make. I think you have to look at that. I think you have to figure out what do you get out of it versus what you're putting into it, whether it be time, money, effort, all of that. I think one of our goals is, I know one of our goals is, and I, you guys have all heard me talk about this multiple times. When I say you guys, I mean Steph and our trainers team and anyone who's involved with the workshop. My goal is when they leave, when anybody leaves, they go, that was well worth it. That was worth so much more than what we put into it because 
I I feel a burden of that. I I they're not they're they're not super expensive. They're no, but I mean, aside from the cost, though, we have a, a few people that came that were local, but majority out travel of out of state. They're taking yeah, off time so from work. They're making huge, arrangements for their family, their kids, huge like everything, huge commitment. And so, you know, it's it's three hundred ninety five dollars, but it's that plus a bunch of other stuff. And so when you look at that, I go, well, that's not like outrageous. Um, which makes it easier for me to feel good about, you know, I think we give them, <laughs> I think we give them well worth that plus a lot more. Yeah. Um, but I think it's also this level where I go, I need, I don't want just anyone to come. I want people that are ready, wanting, really, truly want to take these next steps with their dog or these first steps with their dog, because I am so willing to help and give and provide anything I can for someone to get what they're looking for with their dog if they're willing to give it back to me. And I mean the work. Like if you, it's a big, it's a big step. If you're willing to come here, travel, pay, spend time, if you're willing to put them out, I mean, let's be honest, it's three pretty intense days. Like there's <laughs> really long so days. much stuff that goes They're just into mentally them. exhausting and, as much as they are physically. Yeah. So if, if someone's willing to do that, man, they've already taken the first step. And that's where it kind of thins out. Like you go to do a free seminar at Bass Pro Shops, a lot of people will show up. But all of the, and, but they get an hour's worth of me talking about stuff. I, this is three days of a lot. And I bring in a tremendous group of people for help. Um, I will say that the workshops have gotten better and better and better every year, year after year, even within the year, they improve, and it's because we build such a strong team. Our, I can't say enough about our 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 group. That sixteen dogs, I can't train. I can't help sixteen handlers at once. Cannot do it. Can't do it justice. Can't give the quality that people are looking for. We've got four individuals that are more than capable of handling groups of four or three or however many it shakes out to be. And which is, we're not going to overload them. We're gonna, that's part of why we we limit the size of these so we were maxed out and so now this next workshop isn't maxed out yet but it's pretty close it, it, i would expect it to probably sell out in the next week but that and if it doesn't that's fine too but those four people wyatt chris megan and todd they are so able to provide such good information to their groups and then i'm able to go and be able to pour on top of that and so i just think the way we have them set up right now it's really good um there's so much stuff there's it's just it is an intense three days of overload on dogs and people but the reality is is people don't leave here with trained dogs we make that point right away it's people come here with dogs that need help but most of the problems lie with the people. Mm -hmm. We that was that's true every single workshop, and so yeah. that's the that's that's where I feel like we make the most impact. Yeah, and what I think is interesting for that too, even with our our follow up responses that we get, that's what the majority of the people say. Like I changed as a person at the workshop because. We, I guess, as a group, we always end up analyzing the people more than we do the dogs, and <laughs> we've talked about that. We know that, but what I always think is really interesting is it's such a diverse group of people and dogs that show up usually on Friday, and there's the ones that are here with their egos that want to prove something to you and how good their dog is, and then there's the ones that are nervous as heck, <laughs> and they don't say yeah. a word because they're not sure I think they're all nervous, how they got nervous, wrapped up into this, but... What I think is really cool by the time that we're halfway through Saturday, everybody's on the same page and people let their guard down and they're willing to show mistakes and learn more than anything. And I, I think that's the important part is you have to come into it willing to be a student. And I know there's some people that come that do have very strong dog training backgrounds and, and they've been working with their dog a long time but there's always something that they can get out of it and I think that's really important to just be able to to let your guard down and understand that there's yeah. there's something that you can gain from it whether it's working with new dogs working with new people getting out of your comfort zone if this is your first time ever coming to 
a workshop like this of, of any Which kind. Most of them, <laughs> right. Almost all of them are. Right. Dog and training I, or not, like some I, people have just never done something like that. Yeah, and I and to be honest with you, I don't think I don't think anyone comes not even over all the years, I don't know that anyone comes in with a real feeling of um they've been doing it a long time. They know a lot about dog training. Usually this is a this is such a this this is a workshop that I think there's probably dog trainers that would like to come to it, but don't for that reason. Mm-hmm. And and that's okay. I I wish they would, but that's okay that they don't. Um, they're more than welcome. I wish they would, because <laughs> I can learn stuff. Our home you know? is their home, right? <laughs> but but the people that come, most of them, are so not comfortable with the idea of training. Yeah, they don't know where to start, and I think. That's where they have probably put, most of these people have probably put a considerable amount of effort into it already. And f- and some have found some success. Not many have found much. Like we see so, I think people, I think it goes back to, there were several people that messaged me about workshops so far this spring. And their, their thought was, um, I don't think we're ready for it yet. Maybe they'll next come to year. the next year when and, their dog's and, a year and a half. Old. And I just think, <laughs> man, are you missing the bus? Because yeah. you you will have one regret. You might do that. Come next year, that's fine. Your one regret will be, I wish I'd have done it last year. Because you have a whole year of things that didn't go how you had hoped, habits that were formed that weren't positive. Um, all this stuff that we're gonna unpack while you're here and take these steps backwards and reverse engineer everything you've done and figure out why you are where you are and then show you how to fix it and you're gonna go it's gonna take me so much longer now because i came when my dog was a little bit older and i thought we'd be more well prepared it's the biggest mistake people will make i think you're better off to come with a really young dog even if you have a very young dog and only use it for what you can. We had a 13-week-old puppy. We had a 14-week-old puppy. We had a 16-week-old puppy. They could only do so much. But each one of them never missed a drill. Like they had to handle a different dog. That, so they took one of our dogs. Yeah, or, one or of someone them. else's or one of the handlers. Right. And, and, and got the feel of it. Because it's not about your dog at this workshop. It's about you and about the people and about the couples and about the families. And because... All of we had all of those dynamics this weekend, and each one of them probably look. I know several of them because they ev- they've emailed me already about it. Are looking at the things in life differently, not just their dog. The dog. It's easy to leave these with a ton of motivation. It's easy to leave these with a ton of inspiration. I have it now. Part of it is it's two things: the weather has gotten so much nicer and so <laughs> what we weren't buried in two yeah. feet of snow I mean, like two weeks ago <laughs> yeah literally two weeks ago we had 30 inches of snow it's really hard to motivate to go outside and work your dog on heel work it's really difficult when when conditions become and i'm not weak with weather like i don't mind cold i don't mind the winter i actually enjoy it a bit but it's hard to get stuff accomplished and I, I start to forget about that as the winter goes on. And I realize, you know, there are things with my dogs. And this is this was great to show people too that the dogs that I'm training right now, several of them are considerably further behind than some of the people that brought dogs here. Mm-hmm. Like as far as what they're doing, like the amount of stuff they're doing. I will say this. Most of the dogs that I'm training are better, if you will, or have more solid foundations than just about every dog that comes here. I might not be as far down the road as some, as most, but the 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 distance I've gone, we're pretty damn good. Like, and I'm reminded of that, and that's why it's it's so easy to see. When people come, some of the struggles that come up, because we expose everybody really quickly. We expose everyone by simply doing demonstration stuff, not demonstration stuff, but partake, having people partake in things, drills, breakout sessions. And we and the problems just, they come to the surface. Mm-hmm. And the fixes 
are right here for us to now take st- like our whole strategy with the the outline which by the way i'm revising because we never get through it so <laughs> get about a quarter we of the have way so <laughs> much stuff that we want to get through and just can't but i'm going to revise it uh for this next one every workshop is different that's the other part i think people could take the foundation workshop every single time and take away a whole bunch of new stuff because mm-hmm. they all go differently but the outline itself is strategic like we expose a lot of issues early on and point out the reasons why. And it's really simple when you boil it down and you find out that this core foundation, heal, sit, stay, recall, he, th- these, these things make or break a dog, whether you want to hunt them or have them live in your house with you or you want to train them to do anything. There was a dog, was there one here that was aspiring to be a therapy dog? That was this morning at Mighty Pet, maybe. But so all these aspirations that people have with I their dogs. I think that was at the first one at the next steps, otherwise. So, all, yeah. So all these all these aspirations with dogs, they all have to have the same foundation. And that's why it really doesn't matter what the ultimate, the end goal is. But what I like about it is we find out really quickly where those problems lie. And then... Our idea is let's like take a big picture view of our training plan, a big macro 10,000 foot view uh, after we know the problems. And then let's start to piece it back together and let's start piecing it together sequentially that makes sense. So like we, we have strategized, how can we make this thing work better? How can we be more efficient? How can we get more stuff accomplished in a weekend? All these things that we've strategized, how do we do it? And one of the things I've stuck with is there's we're not going to change the way this thing is built, which will really limit us to the size. We're never going to be able to go bigger than what we are unless we bring on considerably more help. And that takes took me six years to get that, <laughs> to the point where we are right now with the help. So oh. Oh, my phone's ringing. <laughs> so why don't you go and stop it? Yeah, because I think that's that's one thing too is people don't realize necessarily that it's in our house. <laughs> Is it stopping? There we go. Game on. Ball back and play. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's at it's at our house, mm-hmm. and that's something that I think we we love and don't want to change either. Is we want people to feel as comfortable as they can and as close to us as they can, and welcome us kind of or welcome them into our family, if you will, into our pack. But that's part of how I think people <laughs> get comfortable. Yeah. You know, that's how I would if I was going to one. And so, but when it's by limiting it to that, it allows us to really look at this full circle of now let's take these problems and start where we would. I I, I just wrote an article for Badger Sports, Sportsman. Badger yeah. Sportsman. And I'm going to share it pretty soon because um, I just got the electronic version of it. But it was about puppy training. It was about. You know, springtime, a lot of people get puppies, and so I wrote it about puppies, and and the, I think one of the first lines in it is, just got this puppy, now where do you start? And you start in the beginning, no matter what. You have to start in the beginning. And that doesn't really matter if your puppy is seven weeks old or seven months old. You have to start in the beginning. And some of these people might have dogs that are, you know, three, four, six years old this weekend. Mm-hmm. That six-year-old dog, we brought that dog back to the beginning and that's where it started so i think what makes what i really like about the way we try to do it is we try to link the chains sequentially so that it makes sense one step leads to the next which helps lead to the next which helps lead to the next and then the hard part is is you know not every dog is is ready to take all these steps and not every and that's not the important part that's what people have to realize is it's not about the dogs. It's about the people. So I need I need people to be able to come here and watch and, and understand this process step by step. And it's funny, I was this morning I had Zach who helped us out again, new new guy with us, um, working with us, and he was up um, with me in the truck today. We had another project that we were working on, and we, we were talking about, the v, the the new videos and the new DVDs and the pre-order that's 
just out now for the puppy DVD, the pre-order that is just out now for the foundation DVD. I did find out that the puppy DVD is going to probably be closer to three hours instead of an hour. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just that much stuff. Not when you and get so, going. <laughs> and so, but it's, I just, I, I think it's going to be really good. Um, but that he was talking about, you know, yeah, you know, I watched the shed DVD and his comment to me was the hard part I have is, you know, uh, the next, like, I saw you do the, the hunt commands with the tennis balls. And, you know, but my next question is, and part of his problem, he said, was I watched it real broken up. I didn't watch it continuous. I just watched little parts and pieces here and there. And, and so right away, when, you, when you're out of sequence, it's hard to follow. It's hard to find success when you get out of sequence. I think a lot of people that come to the workshop have gotten out of sequence with their training. Mm-hmm. They're doing something before they're ready for it because they don't have the foundation underneath to be able to do what they want to do. We're starting right. at the top. We're starting at the top. And when you start at the top, you fall down. You you tip over. So you have to have it. You start at the bottom and then you add a layer to the and then you add a layer to it and you work your way up to this peak of this triangle. And the foundation is big, wide, and broad. And the top is fine and pointy and elite. And you just have to continue to work to get to that. But if you start up at the top with no foundation, you fall down. And so he was talking about, you know, I watched it that way and that made it hard for me. But, you know, the hunt command part, which we cover hunt command in the workshop. And I think that was a lot of fun. It was a really mm-hmm. a good part of it. We were able to get a lot of things I thought accomplished as groups broke out. But the hunt command part in the video he said, you know, I use scented tennis balls. But what about like, can I use other stuff for that? And I said, Zach, I said, man, the video, that's the problem with videos is I can't show you every single thing that I do with a dog in a video. <laughs> I give you the core idea and then I have to get you, I have to make, maybe I have to do a better job of it, but I have to relay the idea that it's not, baking where you have to do exactly what i did in that video and that's it you have to get a little creative you got to get to the point where you get comfortable with the understanding of the concept and the drills and how they go together and how they piece together and then you go and you try it a little bit this way and you try it a little bit that way and you you don't change it drastically but you vary it so i'm like yeah man you're going to use a training dummy you're going to use a real antler eventually you're going to use all sorts of items and multiple scents and different <laughs> in, in 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 different locations and you might do two at a time one time and you might do three at a time and you might just do one and then you might do the delayed so by by coming to this workshop i think what we were able to really imprint in people is basic general concepts and a few of them we really pound i mean yeah. timing this week this this workshop i think i spent more time talking about timing because more things came up than normal where the correction or the fix to the problem was better timing well you don't get better timing by just learning jeremy says yeah, i need better timing like you have to practice timing and then timing applied into every drill we did and every everything we did there was always an element that people were struggling with or having a lot of success with and i could really clearly i felt like it was really clear and and evident that the timing had a huge impact on it Mm -hmm. so that was one of our big takeaways um you know it's just there's every workshop has a different thing that really stands out i think um, but it's, it's by, by kind of, by spending that amount of time, that kind of concentrated time that like, it's, it is overwhelming. There's so much stuff. And I think our biggest message was you just got so much information. Yeah. Leave here and take a couple of days and just let some of it soak in like your dog's got overwhelmed we had to put dogs up often <laughs> they were because tired they just they got worn out we didn't really move them that much like we never really ran that much and dogs got really worn out because it's a mental stimulation as much as a physical and i think that that is what we have to do and build in but i think that the goal should be for most that come take a few things 
two, maybe three. That doesn't sound like very many, but take two or three things because most people that come probably need two or three things really badly. They need to get better at two or three things like real clearly that is the weakness. That is what you need to work on. We provide that information, apply it, because what will happen, don't leave with 30 things to do because all 30 of them can't happen. They, you might need them all, but you can't get all 30 of them until you get one. And then one allows you to get two and two will allow you to get three. And once you get all of those things and you start kind of checking them off, not saying they're done because they're going to be ongoing forever and you're going to have to go back and revisit a lot of them. But when you get one or two things out of these workshops and apply it, it unlocks a room to the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing. And then you get this, then you start, then you start getting momentum in the right direction. It's really easy to get momentum in a snowball effect towards the negative parts of training. Yeah. And that was a focus this weekend yeah. too, was to have fun and not be yeah, so frustrated we did. We and, did. We... and relax and patience was a big thing and to Pray, not praise as much as correction like right that we got really we talked you know so so and those are things that i hadn't even thought about you know i had in my mind of boy the big takeaways and i was thinking about them today those aren't even there but man we talked about that a lot yeah and so because we had a couple great examples of what happens when your dog screws up and we had yeah. some really good todd was a great example on the trainer's team of not getting frustrated, not blowing up on your dog, taking a breath and just that was huge, continuing huge the drill for, for and ending it see. on a positive note. And it was just so, so, it's so nice, nice to see. To see it <laughs> because my dogs make a lot of mistakes. And what I had one tonight, Cody, and this is a takeaway. So this is where the inspiration and the motivation comes when I leave. So uh, Cody, who were training for, for Tom and Kathy, who were here this weekend with their dog, um, they, I walked in on a, on a retrieving drill with them. They ran a, a circle memory who she, she has never run a circle memory. So she, they ran a circle memory. She made the first one really well. The second one, she struggled. Um, we made some adjustments on the fly at that moment that helped salvage the drill. I mean, literally salvage the drill. But then I went, I went and they didn't know, but I haven't even, I haven't run 180s with her so i can't run a, i can't do a circle without running a double on a 180 so tonight i go well she's ready for it like she ran a, she 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 pushes into cover really nice she does a lot of things really well uh so i it's just something i haven't done with her yet so i started working on tonight and i set it up she didn't do so well on it the first time and i i recorded it because i'm gonna send it to tom and i'm gonna show him you know this is the first one well, there's three things that I think I could have done better. And I realized that and I set it up a second time and I did those things and she nailed it. And so I can show a lot of things that my dogs do wrong too. Mm -hmm. And some people don't believe it. Well, I'm here to tell you. So <laughs> the, the nice part about the workshop is where we as, as, as handlers and as, I don't know what you would call us, leaders i guess of the groups the breakout groups mm -hmm. are really willing to let you know that we are just like you in that we have some good things and we have some things that don't go so smooth and the value i think is not in me showing you my dogs work really well it's in showing you when things get tough when things don't go well which is what you'll experience what do you do how do you handle it because those are opportunities to learn that are greater than the dog doing it right. Mm -hmm. I would rather have, and sometimes I otherwise I get it's a dogs demonstration, not a workshop. Right, and dogs <laughs> and the dogs themselves don't learn. The dog has to understand what not to do as much as what to do, and we're big on reminding our dogs on what not to do. Now right. we got to figure out how to get that balance of both, and then understand that. Give them, give them as much positive when they do things right as we do negative when they, when they don't. And so a lot of good things. Um, one more workshop left this spring. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think just to quick go back to it and it's changing topics a little bit, but at the beginning we talked about all 
dogs being able to come, whether it's a young puppy that you have, six, nine-year-old dog, whatever it is, any dogs can come. But what I think has been really cool to see is the dynamic of the people. And I would say three years ago, a workshop, it was 99% people that showed up that are hunters that plan to hunt with their dogs. They want to go shed hunting. That was their goal. And partially that's because of obviously the, the branding with dog bone. I mean, there's an antler in the logo. So that's kind of what people thought it was about. And then last year's workshops, there were definitely a couple people that came that weren't hunters. And I would say this year, this past weekend, it was probably a 50-50 split. And what I thought was really cool was we had a couple people, and it was it was an ongoing joke between some of us that they said, I didn't know if I could be part of this workshop because I don't own any camo. And a couple people were self-proclaimed city people that didn't even own a pair of swampers or rubber boots, so they had to buy those before they came to the workshop. And, and those were the ones that I think are so brave just to be able to say this is so out of my comfort zone it's so out of my element but this is what I need to do to get myself and my dog better and it doesn't matter if you're a hunter or not but then what I think is cool because we did do the hunt commands in a few of those drills the last day and we also got messages now saying I'm inspired to do more of that and it's something that I never right. thought that I would do with my dog someone made as a, a non-hunter like, tonight, now I, I want to hunt <laughs> retrieving tonight with the dogs in the pond and someone one of those people made a comment huh I can't believe it, but I'm really interested in this whole eye retrieving thing. Now. Yeah, so. and it, it's something fun that you can do with your dogs. I mean, especially in the summer, if you want to cool them down or whatever to do some water work, but you don't know what to do with them unless you learn. And I think that's why the workshops are important for, for non-hunters as well as anybody who's like us that wants yeah. to hunt too. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evolving part of what we do. I think it's, a, it's a, just another way for us to try to be able to extend and connect and widen and broaden our reach um you know just like this podcast like the podcast is a new thing for us um we've got a few other things in the works too so Mm -hmm. I, i our our idea is figure out the different ways that can help you know help people that want help and so that's that uh the workshop is definitely one it's one of my favorite um i think if you would ask anyone um that's been to them they'll mirror the the idea that it is a lot of work um but we we managed to have a pretty good time doing it and i think the takeaway from it is hard to put a value on like it's for both those who come and us Mm -hmm. being a part of it (laughs) like that's that's for sure so That's it. We went over um, number six, the podcast. We're talking workshop stuff. Another, um, if if you are enjoying the podcast, which we need to do a few more of, we're going to be getting a few more of, um, please do us the favor of sharing it, Mm -hmm. right? Sharing it and rating it and leaving us comments, subscribing, Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, So please continue to do that. That is our way of getting feedback as far as and inspiration and motivation on my end to continue to do them the the live with spries became very easy for me to do um which we're not done with them but they they continued to be very easy for me to do as i engaged in them and people engaged back so i think the same will be true with podcasts the same will be true with all these little projects that we come out with um so please do that for us if you would um and uh Again, special thanks to the Turnpike Troubadours for their music, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, It wouldn't be the show that it is, in my <laughs> opinion. So, all right, that's it. Number six is completed. That's a wrap. 